Hey everyone, this is Mark Phillip at Studica, and in this video today I'm going to be talking about the Fisher Technic components and how they all snap together. Uh, the purpose of this is to give you an idea of pretty much all of the different connectors that are a part of these uh, pieces here and how they snap together. So should hopefully give you a bit more clarity on how these Fisher Technic systems work and uh, it should hopefully help you follow along the instruction manual a little bit better. So to start off, the Fisher Technic system is a modularized system. So this means that a reference dimension is used and that all of these components are based on the same dimension. Uh, the dimension in this system is 15 millimeters, which is the base measurement. So every piece in here is based on that 15 millimeter measurement. Uh, this makes the pieces easier to assemble and the components fit together in a variety of ways depending on the design and what we want the parts to do uh, once they're actually assembled. Now the first style is called pin and groove. And if you take a look at these pieces that I have here, you'll notice right here on the tip, this is what's called a pin. So it has a small neck, which is the underside, it's a bit thinner, and then it expands out near the top here. And each of these pieces, if I take this piece for instance, you'll notice that it has a what they call a dovetail groove right here. And it's quite simple that these pieces simply just you push them in and they snap together like such. This is the most common uh, method that's used in Fisher Technic kits. To pull them apart you simply just undo it the way that you did it. So you basically just push outward like that, slides right out. And likewise this piece right here also has a pin on the end. But if I take a look at my red piece you'll notice that instead of the sort of dovetail groove that I have on my yellow piece here. It's more of a circular enclave here. This is what they call a circular path. Now the pieces will still lock together so I can take my yellow piece and I can still slide it in there and it fits perfectly fine. And again you would just slide back out the direction that you slid it in and you're good to go. So this is pin and groove. This is the most common method used in Fisher Technic. It's important to note that these parts are designed to be inserted at a 90 degree angle so that they don't uh, rotate. And to further show pin and groove a little bit more, I have these black pieces here. And they're a little bit longer, but they're very similar. You can see the pins on the end. If I take a look at the grooves, they are circular grooves. And again, these guys can just slide together, no problem. So another thing worth mentioning is what's called a spring cam. So this piece right here is a spring cam in my, uh, in my right hand, this red piece. And the idea with this is if you need a pin to be attached to something where there is not a pin, you can use this to slide it into an object. So say I take this, uh, this black piece here, and maybe I want a pin to be on this end. You can see these grooves here. I can slide this spring cam right in there and now I have a pin on the other end and I could just as easily attach these pieces together. So now we're going to talk about girders and rivets. If you look at the top right area here these yellow pieces are all girders and then these small red items are rivets. So when building larger structures, girders, beams, and struts are utilized to create the structure and add support to resist um, tension and compression forces. Rivets are used to join the struts to the girders and to align the components. The ends of the girders and the beams have the pin and groove system and the centers have a different type of shape. So these are the rivets. And there's two different sizes. You can see one's a little bit longer than the other. Uh, there's a 4 millimeter rivet, which is in my left, and there's a 6 millimeter rivet, which is in my right. The purpose of the rivets is to utilize them with girders, and I'll show you in a few seconds how that's done. So here I have a three-pronged uh, girder, and I have my 6 millimeter rivet. So you'll notice, if I take a look at the shape of the rivet, it's thick on the top side here, but it's thin on the underside. And if I look at my girder, you can see sort of how this is going to fit in. I'm going to put the thin side in through here. I'm going to push it. I'm going to turn it and it's going to lock it into place. And then for instance I could take 
my yellow block I had earlier, which also has a uh, rivet slot on it, and I could put this in there, and then I could say turn it and do what I need to do with this piece. Now, next thing I'm going to talk about are axles. So these sort of long, black, smooth uh, pieces like this, this is known as an axle. So when parts need to rotate, uh, axles are used. The axles need to be supported, so special blocks are used in order to utilize them. Um, you can see here, I have a very specific block. It has a pin on the end of it, which you see on the right here. But you'll notice it has, like a, it has this whole structure in the middle of it. The idea here is that you would pass the axle through it, and then from there you can do what you need to do with this piece. There's also times when we want to use objects um, besides a pulley on an axle. So hubs are used to allow soft objects such as tires to be utilized with uh, special, specially sized axles. So you'll see that this is a hub right here on the right, and then this is a tire piece. So hubs are designed to push into the center of the tire and the friction fit keeps them aligned. So you can see here, I'm just gonna take this hub, I'm literally just gonna push it into the tire like such. And once that's in there, you could do something uh, like taking the axle here and pushing it through the hole on the hub into the car, into the wheel. And now those pieces are connected. So there's two kinds of axles in the Fisher Technic system. There's the smooth axle, which you just saw in the previous bit where I put it through the tire, and then there's what I'm holding right now, which is called a clip axle. Primary difference is if you see the end here, uh, this is what's known as the clip. Now these axles have specially shaped ends. Uh, it's supposed to make joining components a lot easier. So there's different components throughout the Fisher Technic kits that will accept this sort of end, and it will snap in together and hold it in position. For instance, I have this cog wheel here, and if I look inside the cog wheel, you'll notice that it has a slot that will perfectly fit this clip axle in. So all I gotta do is push these together, push them, and you can hear it snap. And to undo it, you just pull it apart like such. And again, you, can, you know when it's fully connected by just pushing it in, you'll hear it snap that. So to elaborate further on it, the special shape on the end allows the part to compress when entering another component and then expand holding it firmly in place. Uh, so that's exactly what's happening when we insert this here. It's inserted, it expands, holds it in place, and it makes it a lot harder to pull out. So normal force is not going to pull this out. I actually have to try and pull it out with uh, a bit more force than you would normally use to push parts together. If we need to attach a component to an axle or make the system adjustable, we utilize a component known as a collet. A collet is a type of chuck or clamp that forms a collar around the shaft. So here, what I'm holding are examples of collets. They look pretty unique compared to a lot of the pieces in the Fisher Technic systems. So they consist of a threaded part that has separations in it, uh, as the tapered cap is threaded onto the collet, the sections of the collet squeeze together and clamp onto the shaft, passing through the center. Uh, when the collet's loose, the shaft is free to pass in and out. When the cap is tightened, the movement ends and the shaft is caught in position. So for instance, if I want to put uh, these pieces inside of this gear for some kind of axle purpose, I can do that. If you notice the gear on the inside, it has these uh, wedges. And if you look at my red piece here on the outside, this would be a perfect fit. So all I do is push this under, slide it in. And then what you do to secure this is I take this top guy. If I look at the underside here, he has a threaded uh, hole in the middle here. And if I take a look at the collet I put in here, it also has threads. So all I gotta do is put this on top and I can start turning it to the right. And once it's feeling pretty tight, right there. Now I could use this as some sort of wheel or cog, whatever you might need. I can take like an axle for instance. I can push it through the middle. The best practice dictates that you loosen the collets before pushing the axle through the hole. 
This will make sure that the axle will not potentially break and it also makes it easier for you to actually push the axle through the hole to the point that you want. Once the axle's through, you just tighten the collets and everything should be okay. So there's a lot of um, different gears, cams, pulleys, tires, and different components that can be placed uh, upon shafts like this. This is just one example. For instance, if you want a second example, what we could do is take these two collet pieces and you'll notice that they pretty much fit together by just pushing them into one another and then tightening. And then I could take an axle like this, I could push it in here, and now we have this piece. So now I'm going to talk about what are called snap fit parts. And as you can see on my right here, I have this sort of crank mechanism. And then I have this piece here, and the idea is that these will sit on one another. Um, to talk a little bit about snap fit parts, these are components that just snap together. Uh, the shape of the parts allow them to be pushed together, and once together, uh, they remain in position. If they're not needed separately elsewhere, uh, you might consider leaving them together. So for instance, if I look at this piece here, you'll notice a little groove here on the right side. There's also one, you may not be able to see it due to lighting, but there's also a small groove here on the end. And what I want to do is just snap, <clears throat> snap these ends together just outside of those grooves. And you can hear them snap. I mean, that's how you know that uh, they've been connected is when you hear that snap. So now they sit together on this piece and I can turn this crank and do what I need to do with it. So another snap fit piece are what are called hinge blocks. Let me get these in my fingers. So you can see that these pieces basically are meant to fit together right here through the center. All you have to do is just basically push your way in there with the other piece and they'll snap together, you'll hear them snap and now you have the hinge blocks connected. And if you need to pull them apart, you pretty much do the same thing, but it's important to note that a lot of times these pieces are very specific and they may not need to be pulled apart. So in our snap fit component are these chain link parts. And you can see that I have four of them here. So each link is supposed to be snapped into a shorter link. Uh, the chain is used with gears for making drive trains. It's also commonly used with track links to make conveyor belts and caterpillar tracks. So to give you an idea, let me just grab two of them here. So as you can see, right here on the end, there's this small little groove. And the idea is that this small groove attaches to the longer segment of the other chain. So you push them together like this. And then you're all of a sudden you're creating a chain. So again, I want the small piece to connect to this larger piece on the end of the other link. So I just put this small, so I put the right hand link underneath the long part and I just snap them together. You push them together like such and you can just start creating a longer and longer chain. And lastly, what we're going to look at are angle pieces. <clears throat> so in addition to square blocks, the kit comes with angle blocks. There's four different sizes, a 7.5, a 15, a 30, and a 60 degree block. Uh, there's a number on each side of the block, so if I take, say, this piece and I turn it over, I can see that it says 30 right there. So this is a 30 degree block. Uh, if I look at this piece, this looks to be the 15. Then this piece is the 60. <clears throat> and lastly, this is the 7.5. That one's a little bit harder to read. But you can see that each one sort of has a different thickness about the slope. And, in, uh, and just like your pin and groove pieces, these all just fit together in whatever way you need. So I can take some of my other pieces and start connecting them together. So 
so that about does it for the Fisher Technic systems. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how all these parts fit together. And um, if you have any questions, you can contact us at www.studica.com. You can also find Fisher Technic kits on uh, studica.com uh, for cheap for educators and students. So uh, be sure to check our website out. If you watch, thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.